Hello and welcome to another edition of News Showcase. I am Priya, Tamil Nadu's first artificial intelligence news presenter. Reports say more than a dozen people have died across India in 24 hours from heat-related problems as temperatures continue to rise. According to officials, 10 deaths were reported at the government hospital in the Rorkela region of Odisha. Deaths have also been reported in Delhi, Bihar, Rajasthan and Jharkhand. The heat waves come as India is holding its general election, which concludes on Saturday. A district official said three election officials and a police officer died in Bihar state on Thursday due to heat. Although heat waves occur frequently throughout the summer in many parts of the country, experts have noted that these events are now longer, more intense and more frequent. According to a report, a study found a 55% rise in heat-related deaths in India in recent years. The High Court in Rajasthan has urged the Indian government to declare the heat wave situation in the country as a national emergency. The move will let authorities order relief measures as it does to deal with floods, cyclones and other natural disasters. The court pointed out that many deaths were linked to the heat waves and said the regional government did not take measures to protect the people. It also suggested funds to be handed out as compensation to families that suffered heat-related deaths. Rajasthan, known for intense summers, recorded some of the highest temperatures in the country this season. Some reports said temperatures breached levels never seen before since records began. Doctors have urged people to take precautions before symptoms of heat stroke appear. We don't take care of the heat-related illness. Uh, basically, it's a spectrum of uh, uh, manifestation, you can say. So the simplest being, say, sunburn, then you may have uh, uh, what we call as cramps. Cramps means you will have muscle pain, uh, dizziness, uh, you will feel tired. So uh, these are the early warning signs. If you don't take care of that, because of dehydration, the uh, blood pressure will start falling. In the midst of sweltering temperatures, residents of Delhi are grappling with a water crisis as authorities deployed tankers to the worst hit areas. The city's main water sources, the Yamuna and Ganga rivers, have been disrupted in the wake of the unprecedented summer heat. Delhi's temperature breached the 50 degree Celsius mark this week and the city reported one death from heat stroke. Delhi is also locked in a water sharing dispute with the neighboring state of Haryana. To manage the water crisis, the government has ordered a fine of rupees 2000 if drinking water was used for any other purposes such as washing cars and watering plants. Authorities said this week about 200 teams of officials will carry out inspections to find out how water is being used by the residents. Lawmaker Prajwal Rewana, who is charged with sexual attacks on women in Karnataka state, was arrested on Friday. He was taken into custody at the airport in Bengaluru as he arrived from Munich. He fled to Germany in April immediately after the scandal broke out. Reports said he was taken to a hospital for routine checks before meeting investigators. On Thursday, a court rejected his application for bail. Rewana is a member of the Janata Dal Secular Party and represents Hassan constituency. The state has formed a special investigation team to probe the scandal, which rocked the state in the midst of India's national election. Rewana is the grandson of former Indian Prime Minister H.D. Deva Gowda. His father, a state-level lawmaker, was also arrested on charges of sexual offences in the same case. India's Aviation Ministry has served a notice to Air India after a flight to San Francisco was delayed by about 20 hours. Reports said some passengers fainted inside the plane after the air conditioning system stopped working while they waited. According to reports, operational reasons were blamed for the delay, and by the time it was resolved, the crew's duty time ended, causing more delays. Images from Delhi's Indira Gandhi International Airport showed travelers booked on the flight waiting at the terminal surrounded by baggage. Air India, owned by the Tata Group, faced criticism in recent months over delays and cancellation of flights after cabin crew went on mass leave over internal changes. Vistara, another carrier operated by the group, also faced problems when its pilots protested over pay revisions. The leader of the Congress party Malik Arjun Kharge has said Rahul Gandhi is his choice for prime minister if the party wins in the national election. He also disclosed that he persuaded his sister Priyanka Gandhi to contest in Raibareli, the seat where their mother Sonia Gandhi won a record 5 times. Gandhi had declined to take part in electoral politics. Kharge said Rahul Gandhi is a natural choice after he campaigned hard and led two nationwide marches to seek support for the party. But he said officially the Congress party and its allies will decide who should be the nominee for the coveted job. The senior leader said priority should be on winning and not in fighting. 
People in West Bengal are also facing water shortages after flash floods contaminated some of the main water sources in the state. Residents in Siliguri town lined up to buy water from private suppliers after authorities advised them not to use water supplied on government-operated pipelines. Reports said recent flooding damaged supply lines from Tista River and the government started drawing water from other rivers. The water was found to contain high levels of biochemical oxygen, considered hazardous to health. Cyclone Rimal, which devastated parts of West Bengal and Bangladesh this week, also left a trail of damage on key infrastructure, including drinking water and sewage systems, causing disruption to normal functions. Donald Trump has become the first former or serving U.S. president to be found guilty of felony at the historic criminal trial in New York. Trump was convicted on all 34 counts of falsifying business records. The former president will be sentenced on July 11th. Legal experts said a fine is more likely than a jail term. Trump criticized Judge Merchant, who oversaw the case, and described the verdict as a disgrace. In the course of six weeks, the court heard testimony from 22 witnesses, among them Stormy Daniels, whose alleged sexual encounter with Trump was at the center of this case. The court's ruling comes at an important time in U.S. politics. Trump is the Republican frontrunner to unseat President Joe Biden in the presidential election in November. Partial results from Thursday's election indicate that the African National Congress, the party in power in South Africa, is headed toward losing its majority in Parliament for the first time since it took office 30 years ago. After counting results from almost 50% of polling districts, the Democratic Alliance is in second place with 23%, behind the African National Congress with 42%. Over 11% of the vote went to the MK party, led by former President Jacob Zuma, while over 10% went to the Economic Freedom Fighters Party. In order to form a majority in Parliament, the ANC would be compelled to join a coalition with one or more parties. The final outcomes should be known over the weekend. Social media is exploding with an AI-generated image of tent camps for Palestinian refugees and the phrase, all eyes on Rafa. Instagram users, including celebrities like Dua Lipa, Lewis Hamilton, Gigi and Bella Hadid, have shared the post over 47 million times. Following an Israeli airstrike and the ensuing fire at a camp for displaced Palestinians in the southern Gaza city of Rafa earlier this week, the picture and the phrase went viral. After the incident, a young Malaysian man shared the picture on social media, causing it to go viral. The health ministry run by Hamas said at least 45 people were reportedly killed and hundreds more injured in the incident. Israel claimed that it had targeted two Hamas commanders and said that a secondary explosion may have started the fatal fire. Reports quoting U.S. authorities said, President Joe Biden has authorized Ukraine to hit targets in Russia with weapons supplied by the U.S., but only in the vicinity of the Kharkiv region. They said the U.S. assured that Ukraine could utilize U.S. weapons for counterfire purposes to hit back at Russian forces preparing to hit them. Following a surprise attack near the Russian border, Russian forces have made progress in the Kharkiv region in recent weeks. According to Ukrainian officials, Russian bombardment of a residential structure in a Kharkiv city suburb on Friday resulted in three fatalities and 16 injuries. Russian soldiers appear to have taken advantage of an opportunity to push farther into Ukrainian territory in Kharkiv as Ukraine waits for more Western weapons to reach the front. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi continued his meditation for a second day on the Vivekananda Rock Memorial in Tamil Nadu state. The rock, off India's southern tip, is a major tourist attraction. It is believed Indian monk Swami Vivekananda meditated on the rock to attain enlightenment. The rock was converted into a memorial for the saint in the late 60s, which is separated by sea from the mainland and accessible by boat. Prime Minister Modi arrived at the rock on Thursday and he is expected to conclude his meditation on Saturday when India will hold its final round of national elections. Modi is seeking a third straight term in office. His National Democratic Alliance is challenged by the India bloc, a grouping of over 20 political parties led by the opposition Congress party. Thank you for watching. I am Priya, Tamil Nadu's first artificial intelligence news presenter. Do tune in, same time tomorrow, for a roundup of the latest news and updates in India and around the world.